All right, you're on. Okay, you guys ready to go? Yeah. Thank you. Hey, it works. Yeah. Okay. Shall we roll? Okay. All right, now I can blast everybody out. It is. It is. I hear it. Okay. How's that? Can you hear me? No. No. <laughs> yes. There you okay. go. That was it. That's what I have to do. Hold it yep. real close. Yeah. All right. I will forget halfway through, so remind me. So I am Denise Dumas, and probably a lot of you know me because I've been around for a few years at Red Hat. And I am the vice president in charge of what's called Red Hat's platform organization, which means that I own the teams, I own, well, yeah. I am responsible for the teams that run Red Hat Enterprise Linux and also the teams that provide support for the Fedora infrastructure, which is actually a great combination. So, I figured that that puts me in the best place of anybody to talk about what does Red Hat want. I want to point out, though, right from the start, that there is no one voice that says, what does Red Hat want? And this presentation is a group effort. So a number of us sat down and talked about what is the message that we would very much like to communicate to a Fedora audience. Right. And we realized that a lot of you work for Red Hat already, but a lot of you don't, and you don't understand the way things work internally to Red Hat. So we figured it would be pretty, it would be good to try to explain how Red Hat works, as well as talk about where Red Hat thinks the world is going and what we would like to um, experience working with a Fedora community. Red Hat, the company, is all about providing support for enterprises. So you know those traditional things that we always talk about, stability, performance, you know, none of this is foreign to Fedora, right? Because Generally, the folks who work on Fedora also work on enterprise software in their day jobs and understand what this world values. But these are the features, the, the qualities, that Red Hat is motivated to make sure end up in Red Hat Enterprise Linux, right? Our main, our, our, our main product. We live in an interesting world. Our customers insist that it has to be a floor wax and a dessert topping, right? Um, yeah, it has to be stable. Oh wait, it has to be bleeding edge. We try really hard at Red Hat to make sure that we're coping with all of this. Um, if you work for Red Hat, you've probably seen this slide before because I use it a lot when I talk with people internally because I think it describes really well what it is that we're, <laughs> the place that we're trying to get to. Stable enough? Oh, but wait, we're moving really fast. Oh, but wait, it can't break. Um, this is what we try to make sure that RHEL covers. Fedora has a different set of criteria, right? Fedora is all about innovation. And from a Red Hat perspective, we understand that innovation is something that we only want to pull into the main product, into RHEL, once it's stable enough. But Fedora is where you get to have fun. Fedora is where you get to try a bunch of different things experiment with it and see what looks like the right, what turns out to be the right combination. So it's fast moving. It's, oh my God, it's fast moving, right? You guys are on a six month cycle. If I could pull that off with rail, it would be a miracle. <laughs> um, 
Fedora also is about community, right? Because one of the things about a company like Red Hat is we recognize that we are not in this alone. We can't do this alone. We live in a world where innovation is happening so quickly. Innovation is happening in the upstreams. It's not anything that any one company is ever going to control. And any one proprietary company that thinks like that is going to be roadkill. Um, and we don't want to be roadkill. And we're not proprietary. So look, look at that, two advantages. Um, community is what we want to work with, right? Community support is what we want to provide to Fedora. Um, and I hope that we're doing it as, you know, we, we do a lot in Fedora. So Fedora, for, for Red Hat, from the Red Hat perspective, Fedora is a chance to try out a lot of different things. See what resonates with people, right? There are lots and lots of ideas around. There are probably 15 different packages for any given use case, right? Some of them are going to be winners. Some of them are not going to be winners. Some of them um, with a little bit of assistance and maybe some patches sent upstream are going to have a much more chance to be viable. What we want to do in Fedora is see how things play out, give people a chance to kick the tires, help understand what the technical difficulties are, um, and help nudge along the ideas that look like they're going to have traction with the people who are eventually going to maybe, oh god, pay for software support. Because um, at the end of the day, right, we have to stay in business. Um, hard to think. So Fedora, as you guys probably know, becomes the basis for what we put together for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And so what we do with Fedora is we watch Fedora release, Fedora release, Fedora release. And after four, five, six, seven um, releases, right, we will bring a release in-house and we'll start building it in-house and we'll try to understand, you know, what packages need to be there, what packages don't need to be there. Make sure we understand the dependencies, do some hardening, you know work on the security for a little bit more, um, and then we put it out as a major release for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. If you think about that, it's a really bottoms up process. Right? There are lots and lots of upstreams, it bubbles up, you kind of get what you get. The upstreams innovate at their own pace, the kernel's off doing what the kernel, you know, their own thing, system D's off, you know, maybe moderately listening to what we ask them to do, right? Maybe, kind of, if we're lucky. Same with the kernel. They do what they do. And we try to pull it all together and make it into a cohesive whole that we can then put, dare I say it, a marketing story around, look, it's a distro. Um, look, we meant to do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and, and that's been a lot of the history. If you think, though, back a couple of years to the Fedora Rings proposal and to some of the work that's happened to support Fedora additions, um, some of that has been Red Hat, the company, working with Red Hat, a bunch of the smart people who work for us, to try to think about what are the better ways that you would do if you were going to support a distro. So we're trying to be a little more planful. I hate that word, but I'm going to use it anyway. Planful about the way that we Red Hat approach an operating system product. So when you think about the way you put a product together, there's bottoms up and there's top down. We're never going to be a top-down company, right? We're never, the product management at Red Hat has got to be the toughest job in the world. Shabenda will tell you that. Um, 
we are never going to be a company that stands up there and dictates to a bunch of engineers, hey, this is what we're going to do. Now go do it. Right? Yeah. All of our engineers would quit, first of all. Um, but, but the other thing is, our engineers are really smart. We need to understand from the engineering teams what's going on in the world, what's going on in open source, because that informs a lot of the decisions, and that informs what's going to go into the product. But what we're trying to do is to be a little more thoughtful about the, the, the guidance that we give to an engineering team. Engineers make lots of decisions every day. They make those decisions really independently because no one is ever going to micromanage an engineer and tell them what to do. There aren't enough management cycles in the world for that to happen. And we wouldn't want to do that anyway because it's a stupid way to waste engineering intelligence. Um, so what we, we Red Hat would like to do with our engineering teams, though, is give them a general idea of where we want the product to go and kind of set up Jersey barriers, right? Here's our general direction. There are going to be lots of technical decisions that happen on the way to destination, but I'd like us all to arrive at agreed upon destination. So when you think about the way that Red Hat the company, Red Hat the REL product line operates, that's what you need to keep in mind. We want to set general direction for engineering. And for REL, the general direction is always going to be something that starts in Fedora, because Fedora flows into REL. Um, Red Hat, the company. So a bunch of you don't work for Red Hat, so I wanted to make sure that I read you our mission statement, because I think it's really an interesting statement. We want to be the catalyst in communities of customers, contributors, and partners creating better technology the open source way. If you work for Red Hat, you probably remember some of the memo list discussion that went into the creation of this mission statement. Right? We're a very open company. Our employees get a vote, right? They get to be part of the discussion. I remember some of this, right? Mo, I know, sure remember some of this. Um, I, we had, we tried very carefully to describe something that didn't say it's just about engineers or it's just about employees. It's about being a catalyst and working with all sorts of people in order to advance open source. And we want to do that to benefit our customers. We want better technology for the world. Oh, and gee, you know, and we do have to survive as an organization. Again, if you work for Red Hat, you already know this, but if you work for a different kind of company, we think Red Hat is really unusual in that we explicitly include in our code of conduct and, and ethics, we explicitly include a statement that says, yeah, we want you to work in open source. And you know what? What you do when you work on open source projects, well, we'd really like it if you kept Red Hat's best interests in mind. But if you see a conflict between Red Hat interests and the project interests, it's OK to do what's best for the project. And you're not going to get in trouble for that, which is a thing I think that really is interesting and unusual about Red Hat. We expect our, our people to be ethical. Um, and the way we define ethical is you do what's right for your project. Employees can put project interests over company interests where necessary. 
It's about me trying to provide guidance about where Red Hat wants to go, but you know, sometimes guidance isn't enough or it, it, it's not appropriate. So the reason I talk about all of this is because it helps you understand Red Hat, the company. This is not, we don't expose a lot of this clearly, I don't think, to Fedora audiences. And so over the years, there's sometimes been misunderstanding dare I say, flame wars on Fedora develop list? Um, yeah, I've seen a lot of those. You guys have probably seen a lot of those too, right? Um, there's a certain amount of suspicion of Red Hat as, oh my God, those evil Red Hat people, what are they doing? Um, you know, never attribute, um, <laughs> Never attribute to malice what could be explained by incompetence. Um, no. <laughs> Miscommunication are us, right? Sometimes, even internally, we are not very well aligned about what our goals are. My job as Red Hat management is to try to help Red Hat, the engineering team, understand what our goals are. And then take those goals and bring them elsewhere, bring them to upstream communities, bring them to Fedora, bring them to the places where we contribute all over, um, all over the open source world. Another thing you should know about Red Hat though is that unlike many other people who call themselves open source, we truly are about the upstreams because if it is not upstream, we are not going to ship it. It doesn't exist if it's not in an upstream somewhere. You know, the reason some of these slides probably look familiar to some of the Red Hat people is that I cribbed some of them directly out of our new hire orientation, right? So when you join Red Hat, you go through three days of new hire orientation because we realize that a lot of people who join us from proprietary companies have no clue about how we work. So I cribbed some of those slides because I want to show everybody in Fedora land um, what it is that we tell people who are joining Red Hat. Again, this is one of the slides from New Hire Orientation. We use it to try to explain to people who've never participated in open source projects before what that really means and the way that Red Hat views it. Hundreds of thousands of millions of open source upstream projects. Of those projects, we pick, we Red Hat, pick the ones that we are going to participate in we try to work really hard in those communities. And all of that eventually ends up in things that we have hardened and tested and support and ship to our enterprise customers with a Red Hat label on it. That means a lot. Um, it, it means, certainly to Red Hat, it means that we stand behind this thing. Um, but it also means that we have an awful lot of places where we have Red Hat people working in communities and participating openly in those communities, representing Red Hat, but also trying to be um, genuine in, in what they do in the communities. Because if it's not genuine, um, it's, it's, it's not going to fly. We really want to be open, right, as a company. Um, Red Hat plus Fedora, Fedora plus Red Hat, truly open. We're not trying to hide things from the Fedora community. 
Sometimes we're disorganized. Sometimes there are differences of opinion among Red Hat people, and that gets exposed to the community. You know, you guys have never seen a Fedora developed flame war in which the two sides, or the three sides, or the four sides are all Red Hat people arguing it out on Fedora developed, right? I've never seen any of those. Um, yeah, you know, we we see those sometimes, and I try to say, um, you know, guys. This is like maybe not so good for the community. Maybe we should try to be a little bit better aligned and not fighting it out and airing dirty laundry so much in public. But the fact that it happens shows you, I think, that we are trying to be as open as we can be. There is no big secret agenda. Um, you know, we don't have these midnight meetings where we all sit and puff on cigars and say, well, how can we? Tell that to Fedora. Um, sometimes, and open and honest, right? Sometimes we do sit and say, you know, here's what we need to do. Here's what we think the product needs to do. Does that work for Fedora? How does that work for Fedora? Is there a way we could make that work for Fedora? Um, now because we understand that. It matters. You know, what Fedora people do really matters to Red Hat, and a lot of the people in Fedora are Red Hat people. Um, we all succeed. Red Hat succeeds when Fedora succeeds, and I hope, I hope everybody here understands that. Um, we genuinely want Fedora to be popular. We want it to be useful for developers, we want it to be available to customers, we want it to be wildly successful. Um, we want Fedora to be the development platform of choice. We want Fedora to be the thing that our, our hardware partners pick up when they want to implement a new architecture. Hey, you know, we want them to ship with Fedora on as the default. That's a win. So again, there has to be some, I've, I've talked a lot that really high level and really, you know, okay, touchy-feely, kumbaya. Um, so this is where we talk a little bit about where Red Hat wants to take the direction of, of the operating system, right? And the things that Red Hat would like to see happen in Fedora. And if you think about it, some of these are also the places where you see Red Hat sponsor, initiatives in Fedora um, that are sponsored and worked on, and worked on, by the way, by Red Hat people. So when I think about the next generation of RHEL, the next major release of RHEL, the operating system, the enterprise platform, what I keep hearing, Shibendu, tell me, tell me again, right? The thing that customers tell you, the only thing that we see going on in the world, right, CoreOS, is it's going to be modular. It's going to be a small hardened core with other pieces that layer on top of that in some sort of a way that gives us the ability to control what the interfaces look like. If you went to Steve's server talk this morning, um, Steve mentioned some of this there, right? How do you put APIs on some of those interfaces? How do you make it so the layers work together and can proceed at their own speed, because not everything is going to advance at the same speed, um, and yet still reliably work together. And by the way, if you think about um, testing and validation and continuous integration and continuous deployment, right, these are all ideas that kind of go together along with this. So modularity, think back to the rings proposal, right? This is a theme that folks from Red Hat have been supporting and working towards for quite some time now. Um, but also, remember that this is Fedora, so there's no, you know, oh my god, we've got to do this, right? It's, we present ideas to the community and try to sell them um, as, here's where we think things need to go. Are you with us? Will you work with us? Dependency management, right? 
So when I think about RHEL and, and what it means to have a small core, managing the dependencies there, the build dependencies, the runtime dependencies, the amount of stuff that you have to ship, that is something that for RHEL, the enterprise thing, I think that we need to cut down on. Right? Every package that RHEL, the product, ships is a package that Red Hat, the company, has to support and if it's a build dependency, do I really want to ship it? Well, that opens up the opportunity for people to use it in lots of ways that we never tested. So you see a motivation here, right? Um, another, another place where we have, in fact, where Red Hat folks have a Fedora initiative going on right now for Fedora 23 is more security hardening. It's hard to argue that security hardening is a bad thing. I know it can sometimes get in the way of use, ease of use, right? And we try to find a middle ground, but security hardening is something that is becoming increasingly important to our customers. And we think that it's important for Fedora as well, um, just because nobody wants to be hacked. Um, Easy to update from release to release. Now, if I'm a RHEL customer, I don't know if you guys know about the way that we sell RHEL, but what, what Red Hat sells is not a version of RHEL, right? You don't buy RHEL 6, and then when you want to upgrade to RHEL 7, you go buy RHEL 7. That's not the way it works. You buy a subscription to RHEL, and you get to use whatever version that we're supporting that you want to use. Which means that RHEL customers have all sorts of different versions running in their environments, because what Red Hat sells is the support for all these different versions. But it means that our customers, when they want to upgrade from one release to another release, are not doing that in a, in a vacuum, right? It's not like one day they're going to go into their environment and throw out 10,000 RHEL 6 servers and replace them with 10,000 RHEL 7 servers. Because, you know, it doesn't work that way. They're going to gradually stage things in. And many of them want to upgrade what they have. So it's really important when we think about what it means to, particularly to a sysadmin, right? to go from one root version to another version, that we, they don't have to retrain their fingers, right? That their muscle memory still works. That the commands that they used are at least not going to destroy them when they type them in on that new major version. Think DNF and Yum, right? Lots of opportunity to cause a lot of pain for some poor guy who's used to Yum. Um, and, but you know, I think that since a lot of the folks who use Fedora are sysadmins, we think that that's actually a goal that's pretty reasonable for Fedora too, right? Nobody wants to have to learn a whole new command line. Um, well, maybe some people do, but there's a name for it. <laughs> so the other thing, though, to think about is a RHEL major release is usually like six or seven Fedora releases, right? Because it's over a much longer time frame. So when we talk about updates, it's over a longer period of time, and so we try to make sure that things are compatible for longer periods of time. But that, but easy to update, you know, so this is another goal of ours for the next generation of RHEL. Um, automated, automated composition tied in with automated testing. So this is kind of a generic goal overall, right? CI, continuous integration, leading to maybe someday continuous deployment. And what that means for an operating system at the moment is anybody's guess, but, but we think that in order to compete in the world, we have to have better testing 
available earlier and earlier in the, the product creation cycle. And we have to be continuously testing all the way through. And we have to be testing at small units to bigger units to bigger units. So that by the time we get to the overall compose, we know all the pieces are good and all that we're fighting are integration, integration issues between modules, right? Or between containers or you know, between elements that are bigger than packages, right? Because the compose is not the place where you want to discover, oh, look, dependency mismatch. So when you think about some of the work that release engineering is looking at, well, guess what? You know, there's a common theme here, right? Because every operating system has this same problem. So this is work that we are trying to support in Fedora, and it feeds into what we do for REL. To think a little bit about specific technical areas, because, you know, it's a technical crowd, right? And I don't get to hand wave completely. Well, I can hand wave all day long, but, but I figured, we, you know, RHEL, it's still evolving. So product management for RHEL is out there talking with customers. And they bring things back to the engineering teams. And then we think about, well, is there a common theme here, right? What's emerging? So what's emerging then becomes, what upstreams do we need to make sure that we have people working on? What upstreams do we need to make sure we're supporting? Um, what efforts? We're, we, you know, we have finite resources, right? Like any other organization. So where do we put our people? Where do we encourage our people to work upstream? So if you start to see us encouraging people to get IPv6 support through all sorts of different utilities that might not have it already, guess what? Um, it's in support of a rel.next theme. Um, IPv6 through stack, atomic, right? So we are hearing from our customers that they want really small core, they want um, rollback, they want the ability, that, that they want the, the, the system management ability that comes with Atomic. So we Red Hat are investing to make sure that Atomic gets good support in Fedora. Python 3, here's another effort that Red Hat folks in Fedora have been working to support, right? We would like Python 3 to be the Python that is in place by the time we get to the next major version of RHEL. And we're putting our money where our mouth is and trying to work with the upstreams and get it supported. Right, Nick? Yeah. <laughs> Seamless DNF integration for sysadmins. There are lots of other things, right? We would love to see more role kit support for interesting roles. Some of the things that Steve was mentioning in his talk this morning, um, a lot of that, it's work that we're trying to support. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the level of support that Red Hat provides for Fedora, because I don't know if you guys have a, a lot of sense of how much we really do invest. I went looking and there are 35 full-time Red Hat people, the Fedora infrastructure team, the release engineering team, a bunch of folks working on QA, 35 people all together. Now, that, that worked full-time supporting Fedora. I took a wag at what that really meant in terms of dollars. If you assume that we pay each of those people 50,000 US dollars a year, which I'll tell you right now, is a low estimate, right? That's $1.75 million every year in salaries alone that Red Hat pays for people to work full-time on Fedora. That's not every year, and that's, that's not an inconsiderable investment, right? We have hundreds of engineers 
who package things for Fedora, who work part-time. We have the copper team, right? We have all sorts of people who are doing things that benefit the upstream, that is Fedora and Apple and copper. Maintainers, QE, press, marketing, sponsorship, ambassador money, hardware infrastructure, and I, I know this because, because this is my hardware budget, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and believe me, there is competition for a hardware budget, right? But Fedora this year got $144,000 worth of new hardware into your infrastructure. Um, so I really, I feel like we're trying to do the right thing here. And the truth is, nobody's going to be surprised at this, right? We don't do this as a charity. Uh, yeah. If I told you this was that we did this out of the goodness of, of Red Hat Hearts, you wouldn't believe me anyway, and I'd be lying through my teeth, right? And I'm not gonna lie to you. We do this because it benefits Red Hat, the business, but we also do it because it furthers Red Hat, the open source company with an open source mission. And that's a core part of our mission statement. We do it because we think, we believe really strongly in open source as the place that innovation comes from and as a place that drives the economy. Fedora is a lot more than a beta cycle for what RHEL is gonna become, right? It's a fountain of innovation, it's a fountain of ideas, and it's a place where hopefully we make the world a better place because we want to promote open source software development. Oh, and we also want to sell RHEL. Um, <laughs> yeah. But fortunately, it goes together. So what we would like to establish with Fedora is we're working towards, and we, and we try to live this ourselves. We want to be part of a community that considers the status quo a hurdle, not a goal. We want to be trying to get better and willing to change in order to improve things. Not gratuitous change, not change just for the heck of it, but we want to be innovative here, right? Try different things and be open to new ideas. Because the distro as just a place where we throw as many packages as we possibly can, that's, that's dead, right? It, it, it's dead, Jim. Um, we want to support a constantly adapting and evolving community, because Fedora is never going to be done. The world is always going to change, and we're always going to have to change in response to it, or we go the way of the dinosaur. Um, and although, you know, the dinosaur barbecue is like, are you really good? Um, that's not what we want for Fedora, right? We don't know, not in the pit. We want positive, constructive dialogue. Hey, honest to God, yeah, I'll admit, we're not always right. Believe me. Um, so we want feedback. We want people to share their ideas. We want community participation. And we really, really, really want to help the community grow because bigger communities um, benefit. So what we plan to do with Fedora is we want to try to be better about the way that we communicate Red Hat goals and desires to everybody. And this talk is a step in the right direction. If I look around the room, a lot of the faces here are from Red Hat. I'm figuring they're the ones who most want to know, what does Red Hat want? <laughs> Tell me, guys, right? Because Red Hat, even internally, is not always clear with the people who work for Red Hat about what we want. Um, so everybody wants to know. And we are going to try to be better coordinated about where we're going and what we want. Positive, constructive dialogue. Yeah, there's that line again. We want to be clear and open about our desired technical outcomes as well. <coughs> as clear as we can be because we don't always know what we want technically because the technical discussions have to happen among the technical people, right? There's gotta be argument back and forth and hopefully the best idea wins. 
that's not something that we're ever going to dictate to a community because we don't know. Um, we guarantee that we are going to be understanding when things don't go our way because, you know, it's a community. Things aren't always going to go the way Red Hat wants it to go. That's life. But we will put our money where our mouth is and send patches. And I've tried to, to show places where we're doing that already. Um, so some of the Fedora initiatives that Red Hat, is, um, Red Hat people are working on, we try to, try to support the things that we know need to happen. So what does Red Hat want? We want to work better with Fedora to create the operating system that is going to be the winner over the next 10 years. And we want that to be Fedora and Rail and CentOS, because right? it's family. Yes, please. <laughs> Any ideas on what form that is going to take, how we're going to communicate that, like what's that? Oh, like? secret midnight cabal. <laughs> no. <laughs> My bedtime not, is for yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's something that we're tr that's something that we're trying to work out. So when I um, I look around the room, right, and there are a number of fairly senior technical folks from Red Hat who are sitting in this room who are also serious Fedora contributors. And what we're trying to do right now is discuss what are we really going to need for the next generation of RHEL. And as we figure that out, we'll be sharing that with Fedora, right? And sponsoring that as Fedora feature requests. Um, I will be doing more. So a lot of people who work for the platform organization um, know I try to do internal Red Hat talks about where we'll be going and I'm going to be trying to do those internally to Red Hat more often so that the Red Hat people have an idea of what some of the goals are. And then hopefully we will, we will be more united when we talk with Fedora. Mm -hmm. Mom? Can you go back a slide? I'm going to point something out. Being a designer, the designer perspective. That's an excellent point. Yeah. 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 Well, and you know, that's that comes back to as well. Engineers make decisions every day that affect technical direction, and if they don't understand the use case, if they don't understand the bigger picture that we're going towards, then they're not going to be able to make the right decisions. So yeah, doing that kind of, Brendan, yeah, doing that kind of communication is. You're right. Something that we need to get better at. And I'm not doubting that people making this decision understand that. It's also oh. good for the bystanders. Oh, you should doubt that, right? <laughs> because we're, you absolutely should doubt that because we're not always clear about that because oftentimes we don't know what those use cases are, um, product management. Um, <laughs> but, but that's okay because we are working towards being more clear about that. So, Remy. So, I'm an interesting place right now with you know my my role is that I've been a Fedora user and contributor for many years and when I finally got to go to the entire orientation in March, I was optimistically skeptical. Right? I was like, okay, once I get into this Red Hat place, we'll see how important yeah. the upstream yeah. really is. Now you get the secret and decoder ring. But like for real, like that slide that had the picture of like the funnel of like that legit, I can confirm, was in my new higher orientation like, in March. Yeah. So for real, like I, 
I'm telling you, like, can be for this is yeah. Hey, I'm management. I plagiarize. <laughs> <laughs> One thing with that, though. Right? Oops, sorry. Langdon. Right, I also had the comment that the other problem sometimes, too, is that because a lot of Red Hatters are heavy contributors to Fedora, that sometimes you forget who you told. Right? Yeah. And so, like, you, you, do, you don't always realize that there's, like, a group of just Red Hatters that you're standing around talking to because you're in Fedora mode or vice versa. And so sometimes the, the, the secret stuff, and particularly I would actually say about the use cases for the technical outcomes to the mode point, um, sometimes because you think you told everybody already that you didn't. Yeah, you think you've communicated it, but you haven't, yeah. Better communication venues, step one. The, uh, there's, there's some managers that don't always do the best as far as the community goes, because they're things that are going to be done to kind of try and encourage them to make sure that their people are working more in the open and you know, communicating yeah. stuff. Better. Yeah, some groups get kind of heads down. Not so much in the operating system team, but some product teams, you know, I mean, you guys have worked on products before. You understand what it's like to have a due date, right? And it sometimes becomes hard for those guys to remember what it means to be upstream first, and so we have to continually remind them. Um, and sometimes it happens a little after the fact. I, but sometimes we have to have cooperation from the upstreams, and if the upstreams aren't cooperating and you have to ship a product, what do you do? So they get into this kind of quandary. I, yes, Mike. I was just gonna add to that. It's, it's having come from one of those groups, I think, uh, mm -hmm. uh, a couple years ago, I think p part of the problem is, and I know that this is known, this is not a big secret, is just that you, know, you gotta look at why they choose to do that. People that w come to Red Hat don't come there to work behind the scenes on closed source software. Yeah. But it can very well be that trying to do stuff in the community is harder than doing mm -hmm. it privately. And that's, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's an honest question. And on the Fedora side, we need to ask why. You know, we have a whole team of infrastructure, we have everything that you need to do this stuff. Right. Why are they still choosing to do right. it privately and, and why is it so out. yeah, but also why is it so hard sometimes, right? But other questions? Comments? No tomatoes. All oh, right. Ah, yes sir. Conspiracy theory, flame <laughs> wars, and such, and uh, yeah. in general, I did not you know, I don't believe them. I mean, we're that's a big company, it's got a lot of stuff going on, and I understand that, but I can understand where a few of those do come from because a lot of times it seems like a huge effort is being spun up, but it's being spun up by almost an insular group of people who they're all red hat people, they yes. all know what their goal is, but. Nobody else seems to know what yes. their goal is, and they're doing, and, and that's, there's nothing wrong with that in general. They're contributing back, but it's yeah. confusing. But it needs, sometimes. yeah. Well, that kind of ties into what Langdon said, right? That sometimes we forget that the people in the group that you're talking to are right. only red hatters. Um, it means I think that we need to be doing those discussions. You know, that's the kind of discussion that always happens best face to face. Yeah. And so we don't see everybody um, all that often. I'm hoping that a lot of this, dis that these discussions are gonna happen at Flock, right? Um, maybe, you know, <coughs> Flock, DevCom, those are the kinds of things. Um, maybe we try to do more face-to-face, -face, or, you know, we just do more Google <coughs> Hangouts, right? Um, Is there, I mean, I, I'm gonna assume, make the assumption that the board, the Fedora board knows, or the council, sorry, mm -hmm. knows what what the current goals are with regards to Red Hat, what Red Hat is going to push, put their their effort into as it involves Fedora. I think mean, I assume like if um, why would you it's, assume it's that? It's been determined that Docker is a big deal. Yeah. So we're going to do Docker. Yeah. And Atomic course, is a big the deal. Fedora that means a whole a set of things down to packing the guidelines for the, the language that Docker is written in have to be developed, et cetera. And that, so that affects a ton of stuff. 
And I had no idea that there was this big push because I wasn't paying attention. I didn't know. Right. No, we didn't communicate that clearly. Yeah, so I didn't okay. know. And so all of a sudden there's this huge push and all the people working on this. And it seemed to come out of a whole cloth. And I, yeah. I know it's a big deal, but I didn't think it was yeah. such a big deal that, such, that that kind of group would spontaneously organize itself. So <laughs> yeah. I just wasn't sure. And, and yeah. if, if the council knows, then the council can obviously communicate. Council doesn't know, well, then I don't know. Um, but sometimes so I wonder if, if that's that occasionally. Great. That's a good idea, yeah. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. that we, we do a kind of official, maybe quarterly council update or, or something. Just, you know, this is, this is what we've determined. I mean, obviously, Fedora doesn't have to follow Red Hat. No. Red Hat doesn't have to follow what Fedora does. And everybody works better when their interests coincide. And so mm -hmm. if we know what what Red Hat wants to do, then mm -hmm. maybe the just the non yeah. Red Hat Fedora people can still try to make that happen. Yeah. But only we know and the Fedora so, is so not actively working. We haven't really kind of production or, or ways. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm working there, but not actively work against the same. I have people. a feeling there yeah. are people who would. There are. Um, <laughs> but so well, here's the thing. Be, so. Who gets to be the Red Hat spokesperson, right? Um, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I, I report to Denise and talk to her fairly regularly about all these things. Mm -hmm. Try to communicate. I think there have been times in the past where Red Hat's direction wasn't being necessarily communicated even to Red, even to Hat Red Hatters. Or people in yes. significant positions, right? I mean, the council has a just got moral, so you can all come to that and see mm -hmm. what we pretend we know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen? Oh, oh, yeah. sorry. I think in the Red Hat since we were, I think, something some in the order of 30 people. And it's about that. It was, we had the list of elements. And the list of elements was where you, uh, the mailing list where you find out absolutely everything that was going on technically in the entire company. That's what you found out. And oh, it was it was open. It was it was not secret. But as it has grown, scaling the communication has been one of the single hardest things. And I don't think that the problems that you're identifying yeah. there are, are specific to uh, Red Hat talking to Fedora. These things are just yeah. hard to do when you grow the <laughs> number of people. And there's always the risk that you turn the part of the other direction and you end up maybe having so much information that nobody is able to pick out that it's fast enough to do that. So yeah, these problems are hard. There's nothing malicious if you're missing things. Tell us what we can do better. Uh, but with a project this size, there are no silver bullets, so work with us on that. And point out where we screw up, right? I mean, well, I know you will. Um, <laughs> but do that here. So there's, there's one thing which I think in the in the community that makes Red Hat looks a little bit bad is uh, when Red Hatters are actually living with Red Hat and are federal yeah. managers. So what's happened is um, when Red Hatters leave Red Hat and are federal packager, we get an email saying that this person has left Red Hat and is a packager for these and these packages. And then we send an email to the devilry saying like, this Red Hatter has left and has packages and we don't know what he or she wants to do with it. And then a week or two pass by, and then no answers. And packages are found, and someone mm -hmm. take them or don't take them. And this is something which reflects a little bit badly on Red Hat because mm -hmm. it gives the feeling to the community that people that are living Red Hat are living Fedora. And that, so that, so mean, that gives the, yeah. the yeah, so so that they were actually paid to work on Fedora and that they don't care about Fedora, so when they leave Red Hat, they leave Fedora. It's not hey, this is hey, hey, true. look two people over. Yes. <laughs> 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 the reason, the reason past is the only counter example I've seen. Yeah. Oh. He's the only Red Hat that I know that I've left Red Hat and actually prepared his departure by moving his package to other people and working. You also, yeah. it was, uh, we had some fun, someone else that also did this. Well, there was an yeah. 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 But yeah. I, I actually have a question, but I also mm -hmm. want to respond to that. Just, yeah. um, you know, Denise mentioned that earlier that Red Hat specifically says, you know, like when I came on board, I, I was I came from Citrix and I was working on Apache Cloud Stack, which 
kind of competes with open stuff, right? Explicitly, it is allowed for me to continue working on that. That's not the case when someone needs Red Hat and goes elsewhere. Yeah, that's so a good point. So there's a lot of, you know, somebody will use Red Hat and say, let's say somebody, you know, Amazon swoops in and gives somebody a really good offer. They don't have that same agreement for Amazon. Plus, you know, your day job somewhere else, while, you know, like a lot of stuff I do on the door, I don't consider part of my day job. But I have that latitude, whereas when you go to Amazon or Cisco or something like that, you may not have that latitude. So I have your yeah. point, your point. How does this allow you to work with your own time? I don't know. I'm just as an I do know people who've gone to the Amazon. The majority of proprietary companies have not issued properties that can that read, yeah. read strictly by a lawyer that you can't work on these projects. Yeah. Well, projects you work on are intellectual property that belong to the companies that you work for. And even if they can, their day job, the time, and the stuff that they're expected to do doesn't need much money. Most of the community is actually doing this. So, two suggestions that, then. That's why when First, it gives to these people that are doing this on their free time the feeling that they were only in Fedora because they were paid. Is there something right? wrong with working on Fedora because you're paid by Red Hat yeah, to do no, it? No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, actually, you know, that's like, okay. Some people are that way, right? And some people take it another step further. And in fact, most Red Hatters take it that step further. So, but, but I hear what you're saying that we, shouldn't make, we should make sure that packages don't get abandoned um, just because someone, someone leaves Red Hat. Okay, Joe, yeah. I, one thing that I, I, this may be a pipe dream, but I would love to see a commitment, you know, we have reached an information overload. I can barely keep up with the some of the, the internal discussions about Docker and Atomic, mm -hmm. much less all the external ones and so on. I would love to see Red Hat invest in some, just one or two resources to summarize discussions and make them public for, so people can follow those things. Hi, Brendan. One second, hang on. You guys are more than welcome to stay in here as yeah. long as you want, right. but we're 15 minutes over already. Oh, and I just want to remind everybody that there is no plan for dinner, so you're on your own.